And one of the arguments from Darwinists is that we have primitive organs left over from our evolutionary past. One of the popular ones is people are sometimes born with tails. This week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Our topic this week is humans with tails. Yes, a persistent argument for evolution is the idea of supposed uh, atavistic organs, which are uh, you know, throwbacks to a believed evolutionary ancestral past. And right. Th yep. This is allegedly caused by genetic information within the DNA for that ancestral trait, which is somehow, for example, by mutation, um, uncovered or, or able to be expressed. So it was uh, previously been switched off, and then it's been switched on, et cetera. Okay. This argument is related to the issue of so-called vestigial organs, right. which are supposed to be degenerate organs that are a leftover from our evolutionary past when we used to use them. Mm -hmm. um, creationists debunked vestigial organ claims long ago, <laughs> and if you go to creation.com, you can find articles that deal with things like the appendix and the ton and tonsils and the tailbone and male nipples and body hair and, 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 and many other things yeah. uh, that used to be considered vestigial. And even many evolutionists have abandoned these arguments. Right. Uh, modern versions of these vestigial claims, such as uh, the failed uh, uh, junk DNA idea, yeah. um, are constantly being promoted as older arguments fall off of the, the so-called evolutionary bandwagon. Right. Well, these never-say-die, uh, this never-say-die enthusiasm for um, this argument um, is because any useless or leftover organ, that, that'd be kind of seen as a smoking gun evidence of our uh, for, uh, you know, supposed evolution. evolutionary march from earlier organisms to, uh, right. to our more present form. Uh, for example, why else would they, they say would, would we have organs for, for features and you know, functions that yeah. Yeah, fair enough. we don't good serve, argument. Yeah, serve any purpose today? Yeah. Now, atavism is defined as the tendency to revert to, ancest uh, to an ancestral type uh, in biology, at, at, an atavism is an evolutionary throwback, such as traits reappearing which had dis disappeared generations before. Mm -hmm. um, a popular example of atavism is these, day, th th these days is the claim that humans are sometimes born with fully functioning tails, and that's yeah. the terminology that's used even. Uh, yeah. This claim was made by professing, uh, but questionable, highly questionable, uh, <laughs> Christian, uh, Carl Giberson during a debate with intelligent design proponent Stephen Meyer. Uh, Giberson is a, is a major contributor to the theistic evolutionary organization uh, called Biologos and is the author of the book Saving Darwin, How to Be a Christian and Believe in Evolution. Right. Fascinating. In writing about this aspect of the debate afterwards, Giberson said, quote, why does the human genome contain instructions for the production of features we don't use. The scientific explanation is that we inherited these instructions from our tailed ancestors, but the instructions for producing them have been shut off in our genomes, which is why Shallow Hal is the only person most people know who has a tail. Sometimes the ignore these genes messages, message get lost in fetal development, however, and babies are born with perfectly formed, even functioning tails. Now, during his debate, Giberson actually showed a photo of a human baby with a tail attached to verify his claim. Awesome. Uh, embarrassingly for him, <laughs> it turned out to be a photoshopped image apparently obtained from a website that features a lot of satire. Yep. Uh, oops. Um, Giberson has since, the, since that time apologized, but it, it, it's hardly a shining example of diligence for, uh, right. for a PhD scientist and a good warning to those who blindly accept these, these evolutionary right. evidences without thoroughly examining their, their validity. Exactly. So. <laughs> Prominent atheistic evolutionist and biologist Jerry Coyne makes similar claims in his book, Why Evolution is True. He says, quote, rarely a baby is born with a tail projecting from the base of its spine. The tails vary tremendously. Some contain vertebrae. Fortunately, these awkward protrusions are easily removed by surgeons. Okay. 
So the claim is that sometimes human babies are born with, quote, perfectly formed, even functional tails. That's what Giberson said. Right. Which are obvious throwbacks to the tailed condition of our evolutionary ancestors. They also claim that these vestigial, uh, the, 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 the genes for those tails, right. uh, remain encoded in the DNA of humans and that the tails form when these normally dormant genes are accidentally reactivated. This is further proof, they say, that a tail can be seen forming in every human embryo right. during development. They also state that these people that are born with these tails, um, are, they're perfectly normal, they're, they're perfectly healthy, and the tails are easily removable, uh, presumably to reinforce the idea that these aren't pathological abnormalities, okay. right? Okay. They're easily taken yep. care of. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this when we get back. Do people ever have tails? Right. We'll look into more detail shortly. Most people have experienced the frustration of failing to find a location because they've been given confusing directions. But even though humans can often be hopeless at giving directions, the humble honeybee manages to give excellent directions, even though it does so in a very unusual way. Scientists have long known that when honeybees discover a new food source, they return to the hive and perform a special dance that remarkably informs the other bees where to find the food. But this dancing mode of communication communication is so complicated that it took Austrian naturalist Karl von Frisch 20 years to decipher it. Since complicated dance routines require the planning and forethought of an intelligent choreographer, wouldn't it be reasonable to conclude that a super intelligent mind programmed the bees with this remarkable form of communication? To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. If you just tuned in, this week we're talking about humans with supposed tails. Yes. Well, humans are sometimes born with various types of growth on their lower backs. Uh, Though medically termed caudal appendages, they're commonly referred to as human tails. Mm -hmm. And if we do an online image search, if you do an online image search, for example, using the phrase human tails, you're going to find all sorts of uh, these images. Some of them are are a little disturbing, uh, but you'll find them there. Yeah, and the most popular uh, story regarding this that most people have been exposed to is probably that of uh, Arshad Ali Khan, a teenager from from Punjab in India. Uh, A human tail search online, it's virtually guaranteed to find news reports and images uh, regarding this young man. He's uh, been hailed by some as the reincarnation of the Hindu monkey god, Hanuman, because of the uh, 18 centimeter, seven inch tail that he has. Uh, Unfortunately, like most people uh, that have these types of things, um, he's got associated medical challenges. He can't walk, he's got partial paralysis, Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he's got to use a wheelchair. And the UK's uh, Daily Mail that is reported um, that the doctors are actually considering removing the appendage uh, as even though his condition ha- hasn't been formally diagnosed, they believe, quote, uh, they believe his tail and partial paralysis could be a sign that he has a form of spina bifida called meningocal. And this uh, develops when membranes poke through a hole between the vertebrae in the back. Hmm. Now, there are, uh, broadly speaking, two types of these appendages which may vary in form from a few centimeters to well over 10 centimeters long. In in medical uh, literature, some are referred to as true tails, which contain muscle and uh, can can move and are located extending from the tailbone, and um, and others are termed Mm pseudo-tails, which are generally uh, flaccid, they don't have muscles, and can be located in a variety of different places. Right, and this terminology itself, um, which is kind of based on evolutionary su- assumptions, yeah. It, yeah. Is, uh, it's misleading. Someone investigating this debate can find scientific papers where doctors and researchers, scientists, use the term human tails. Right. So, so a lot of people, they're just basically going to look no further. They're going to say, well, a scientist calls them tails. And uh, the problem is that the term tail is used more descriptively than scientifically. I mean, if someone is born with one of these tubular growths extending from the shoulder uh, or their arm, uh, then they don't refer to it as a tail because it isn't in the location where a tail would normally be if we had tails, uh, if we had uh, were creatures with tails. But uh, when one appears on the lower back or on the buttocks, it's easy to see why people use the term. They call it a tail, yeah. Well, yeah. the fact that these uh, the so-called tails can appear 
other than where, t where tails on other creatures would normally be is a good argument against them being truly uh, vestigial growth or exactly. being tails at all. Instead, they're just an abnormality in normal human development unrelated to any type of ancestral genes or anything like that. Right. One researcher from Duke University Medical Center in Durham, North Carolina said, uh, he said this, one of the earliest etological or that's causal explanations for the quote unquote human tail was that it was a remnant of the embryologic tail seen during gestation. Uh, there are several problems with this theory, the most obvious being that these occur in locations other than the embryologic sacogeal, there, well there it is on the screen, region. <laughs> they, they're out of that region. So that's a pretty good reason for not labeling this thing as a human tail. Right, and even the, the term true tail or pseudo tail, uh, these terms are misleading because the causes of each of these deformities are now thought to be related. So yeah. caudal appendages or human tails were divided by uh, Deo and Netsky researchers into true tails, which contain muscle and are movable, and pseudo tails, which do not move. However, this is now considered um, arbitrary, without clinical significance, mm. as both kinds are derived from uh, notochordal remnants. And the etiology, the cause of both is probably similar. This is uh, what they're saying. So modern doctors familiar with this uh, sort of uh, condition seem unanimous in the description of human tails as being the result of birth defects. Yeah, uh, like the example from uh, Arshad Ali Khan there uh, that was mentioned, almost all of these all of those with these caudal appendages mm -hmm. uh, have related potential serious medical conditions like spina bifida and tethered spinal cord. Right. And uh, we'll say more about those things when we get back. Creation Ministries International edifies the body of Christ by providing more than 30 years of Bible-supporting scientific research delivered through speaking engagements, books, magazines and a variety of media, much of which is archived on our website creation.com. Did you know that if you read three articles on creation.com each day, it would take over seven years to read them all? Such a wealth of information didn't arise by chance, however. We do this through the faithful prayers and gifts of our supporters, which also fund ongoing research. Support the building up of the church by partnering with CMI. Donate today at creation.com slash donate. Okay, on this week's episode, we're talking about humans with tails. Do, do humans actually have tails? Uh, uh, human, uh, so, so the so-called human tails, although very rare, mm -hmm. have been, they've, they've been known for a long time. It's only been recently, though, through technology like CT scans and MRI, that some of the conditions associated with these appendages can properly be diagnosed right. and, and assessed. Uh, a case published in 2010, a few years back, said the following. A human tail is a rare congenital anomaly with a prominent lesion. Many authors saw this curious and rare condition to be evidence of man's descent from or relation to other animals. Advanced imaging technology in recent decades has allowed a more thorough investigation of these patients and better defined their association with spinal dysraphism and tethered spinal cord. Right. All right. And, and a 2008 report in the Journal of Perinatology stated, quote, the most important feature of caudal appendages is the possibility of associated spinal dysraphism, which needs to be treated to prevent the development of neurological symptoms. Therefore, caudal appendages require meticulous imaging and neurological evaluation to ensure that appropriate surgery is performed to prevent progressive neurological symptoms. All right. However, papers written kind of you know pre-MRI right. uh, type of thing, they made claims like vestigial tail can easily be removed surgically without residual effects and the true human tail is a benign condition not associated with any underlying that is spi spinal cord malformation um, so older uh, diagno diagnosis on this condition may have seriously underestimated the the associated medical problems mm -hmm. of patients with with these tails partly because of the lack of equipment, the, the, the lack of technology, but also because of the false evolutionary concepts learned from textbooks. That's where this comes from. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, due to the associated abnormalities, serious uh, medical uh, researchers now refer to this as a disturbance, quote, in the development of the embryo, but not a regression in the evolutionary process. So we've seen that these so-called human tales um, 
we've been discussing are really birth defects. Uh, but reinforcing it is the idea that uh, uh, all embryos have tails at one stage in their development. This is another one of the common uh, things said. All right. Uh, many continue to believe that the genes were responsible for this, uh, this embryonic tail are the ones that, when not switched off, are the cause of the human tails. Right. Uh, Carl Gib uh, Giberson, who we mentioned earlier, uh, says, he says this, we inherited these instructions, uh, for, he's talking about tails here, for tails, from our tailed ancestors, but the instructions for producing them have been shut off in our genomes. Sometimes the ignore these genes messages get lost in fetal development, however, and babies are born with perfectly formed, even functional tails. Functional tails, that's what he's saying. That's right. He, he also expresses he, these ideas in his book, Saving Darwin, How to Be a yes. Christian and Believe yep. in Evolution, where he writes, quote, two-month-old embryos of chicken, pigs, fish, and humans look similar. They all have gills, webbed, feet, webbed hands and feet, and tails. In a few weeks, these formations disappear from the human embryo. He argues, just like the atheists do. Wow. <laughs> so humans had gills, webbed feet, and tails during development? Uh, no. <laughs> Giberson is wrong, right. but let, let's examine this. Yep. The idea that the human embryo has, has uh, gills, for example, has long been discredited. Even a standard embryology textbook uh, uh, said as far back as 1981 that the grooves, often called branchial gill or gill clefts, are now properly called pharyngeal, uh, not branchial, mm -hmm. because in the human embryo, real gill branchia are never formed. Right. That's so <laughs> Giberson's using false arguments that even evolutionists have given up on as proof of evolution, and he calls himself a, a, a Christian. Yes. There are yeah. no gill slits uh, either in the human embryo. The same text uh, referencing, uh, referenced above um, it says that the associated pouches do not establish an open communication with the external clefts. So Giberson, the guy's just clearly out of touch here with modern yeah. science, yeah. even though he, you know, he's fully entrenched in evolutionary dogma, but he's just not keeping up to date on even their own arguments. Yes, and, and <clears throat> it's, it's that same thing for the, the idea of webbed feet. Human hands and feet are unique from the beginning, yeah. uh, and we're not supposed to have descended from a duck-like ancestor anyway. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's programmed cell death there. in between your digits when you're being formed in right. your mother's womb, and of yep. course sometimes there can be you know problems in, in, in birth defects and stuff like that. So so um, you know rarely these digits. Um, they're, they're incompletely separated at birth, and so this probably gives traction to this whole, you know, webbed uh, feet and hands myth. But anyway, right. it's kind of embarrassing when we need to look at what PhD scientists are saying and say, and say okay, well, they're, they're, they're wrong. Uh, uh, anyway. Just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get into this more when we get back. What does a cow have in common with a compass needle? The answer is that both of them know the orientation of the Earth's magnetic field. No, this isn't crackpot science. In 2008, the prestigious journal The Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences USA published research documenting how cows grazing in a field have a tendency to align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. And this phenomenon isn't just limited to cows. Many animals, including deer, birds, turtles, bats, and even some bacteria, can sense the Earth's magnetic field for alignment or navigation. The fact that so many living things have this ability is rather ironic, considering that the famous evolutionist J.B.S. Haldane once said that evolution couldn't produce magnets. Just as man-made magnetic compasses are the product of forethought and design, so too the magnetic sensing in animals points to an intelligent designer. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. So our subject today is humans with tails, and as we've seen, the, the claim that humans have gills and webbed feet and hands, well, that's completely false. Yeah, it doesn't really fly. Yep. And, and uh, the idea that all human embryos have a tail is similarly false. Mm -hmm. During the fourth and fifth week of the normal process of development, all humans develop a, a posterior extension of the embryo during the musculoskeletal structure beyond the anus that helps unfold the human body plan and right. the nervous system. Um, so it's not because of some vestigial <laughs> tail DNA. Uh, it's, it's a critical stage in the program development of the human embryo. It only looks like a tail 
what it does is it acts as a type of template that guides the formation of other structures at precise times during later development. It's quite, quite important. Right. Those developments are com uh, complete genetic programming. Uh, they, they ensure the removal of the original structure as, as it's no longer needed. So at once it's, it's done completing, then it, it's, uh, it's removed. Right. And, um, and, and this isn't just unique to uh, the posterior extension. Many such structures form and are reabsorbed during normal human development. This is just a natural thing. An analogy would be kind of like a stonemason, you know, if they're going to make a, a, an archway. Because right. the, the arch won't support itself until you put the keystone in, what a, what a mason will often do is they, they build this wooden support called a buck, and you, you place the stones there that supports it, and when you finally put that keystone in, it's self-supporting, you remove you the buck, away. Yeah. and, and you, you would never even have known that it was there, right, if you hadn't seen it being built. So it's like this uh, framework, and, uh, and by the way, this typifies a forethought and design not some kind of yes. haphazard, yeah. thrown together uh, accumulation of leftovers. To see whether humans are sometimes bored with, with fully functioning tails, let's consider what a real tail is. Mm. What are the functions uh, of a real tail and the structures required for that function, and then compare them to these so-called human tails. <laughs> now remember, it's been stated that humans sometimes have, again, fully functioning tails. That's from Giberson. Right. Let's see whether humans actually have tails, right. uh, comparable to animal tails, whether in embryonic form or at birth. Right. Well, animal tails have fully developed structural vertebrae, right. um, con continuing past the rear hips with appropriately attached muscles, nerves activating these muscles with the appropriate neural pathways and the control of the tail all the way uh, to and in the brain, right. and yeah. other needed soft tissues present in anatomically appropriate relationship with all of these. So the tails of animals under the control of the respective creatures are used for their following prehensile grasping, brushing insects away as a decoy, uh, like when uh, lizards voluntarily detach their tails, for example, and then they, <laughs> they, they run away. Uh, communication, like a dog wagging its tail or, or like a cat slashing its tail to show that it's, <laughs> it's not yeah, really happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keeping warm, like when a husky lays in a circle and he puts his uh, you know, tail over his nose. Right. And, and probably the most important, uh, of course, is for balance when walking or running. So these are all important things that real ta tails are used for. Yeah, okay. Uh, despite bold statements to the contrary, no true tails in humans have ever been found that has the features that we see in animal tails, some right. of those that, that, that you just mentioned. Right. Um, even though pseudo tails have been found to contain bone, they don't contain vertebrae. Right. So Jerry Coyne's statement that some human tails have vertebrae appears to be false from all accounts that we've been able to access. Right. So all these caudal appendages do uh, do not closely resemble any real animal tail structurally. And no humans born with such an abnormality are able to use their, their caudal appendage for any of the functions uh, that were mentioned. You, you just don't see that. Thus, the claim that humans are sometimes born with fully functional tails is misleading and false. That's right. It's absolutely false. When's the last time you saw somebody uh, wrapping their tail around their nose to keep themselves warm, yeah. <laughs> etc.? Anyway, we'll look into this even more when we get back. Creation Ministries International staff, many from a wide variety of scientific disciplines, have produced thousands of articles now available in a massive online database. Some of the topics covered include the feasibility of Noah's Ark and evidence for a global flood, scientific arguments that explain observations in astronomy within a young Earth time frame, recent discoveries that support dinosaurs fitting with biblical history, evidence from biology that shows that the type of change that is observed in living things has absolutely nothing to do with evolution. Got questions? Get answers at creation.com. So our subject today is humans with tails. All right. So let's summarize what we've, been, what we've seen uh, with this uh, human tails argument with this statement by physician and surgeon Dr. Michael Egnor. Uh, he is the vice chairman of the Department of Neurological Surgery and director of pediatric neurosurgery at the State University in New York at Stony Brook. He's got actual surgical experience with these so-called tales. He says this, none of them and none of the reports in the literature that I know of are actual tales. A tail has vertebrae, it is a continuation of the coccyx, has developed muscles, nerves, and other soft tissues, etc. The appendages described in the literature and all of the appendages on which I have operated are dysmorphic mesenchial tissue, often epithelialized exophytic 
dermal sinus tracts. Well, if you can figure that out, that's great. <laughs> that bear superficial resemblance to a tail. That's the important part. Uh, superficial resemblance to a tail. None have the structure of a tail, even in rudimentary form, and none of the ones I have operated on were attached to the coccyx in a way that a tail is. Well, you there did, you have it. You did a really good job with that. This, I mean, <laughs> for those that are... I'm not a surgeon, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, if you can understand that, off yeah. you go. For those there of you who are unfamiliar with medical terminology, that means that these so-called human tails are an abnormality consisting of a specific group of malformed yep. cells from the middle germ layer of the uh, embryo that form a lesion protruding outward from the skin, forming a tail-like growth. So, um, to summarize, one, the human embryo never has a tail at any stage. Number two, developmental abnormalities can rarely cause caudal appendages which have been loosely termed tails. Three, these can be of varying types and sometimes contain enervated muscle causing them to be movable. Number four, though this has unfortunately led to the term true tails, no babies are ever born with anything that could remotely be called a true tail, either structurally or functionally. Right. Five, medical researchers and clinicians are, that are faced with these rare occurrences are increasingly stating the obvious whether or not they believe in evolution or not, uh, that none of them are tails. Rather, they affirm that their status as various types of birth defects unrelated to any animal ancestry. Number six, people with these caudal appendages, defects, these defects here, most often suffer from a variety of potentially serious medical conditions mm -hmm. and most of the appendages are not, quote, easily removed, as, as we've been told, uh, as vocal evolutionists have claimed. Right. Seven, these defects clearly provide no support for the claim that humans have vestigial genes for tails encoded in our DNA. All right. So once again, a Darwinian myth, in this case the atavistic or, or, or throwback organisms, vestigial organs, that type of thing, has been shown to be scientifically false. That is, the observations from science fail to support evolution. You know, try, try as hard as they might, they still can't make monkeys out of us. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what's really funny too, is our closest ancestors are supposedly apes, not monkeys, and they don't have tails. Um, but anyway, this is <laughs> something else to think about. I'd mention that. Uh, <laughs> Creation Magazine, this, this show is called Creation Magazine Live, and what we're trying to do, what, what Calvin and I do on this show is we take the, the information that you're going to get in Creation Magazine. Creation Magazine has been going now for, for what, 37, 38 years, mm -hmm. something like that? And, uh, and we deliver it on this, on this program. So okay. if, you, if you're encouraged, if your faith is encouraged, hearing some of these programs and that kind of thing, watching, watching the, the shows, consider getting Creation Magazine. You can look at a free digital copy online for free. Go to creation.com slash free mag, and you can see there a free copy. If you like it, you can subscribe on creation.com. Next week, we're going to talk about death before sin. What kind of death would that be like? Mm -hmm. See you next week.